All right. Well, hello, Jerry Ward from Viscosity. How are you today? Hey, Laura, I'm doing great. Hanging good. out in LA. Yes, it has been a good day. <laughs> good day at Oracle Code. So you, um, you and I were talking about a concept I don't think I've really heard it articulated the way you talk about infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code, exactly. So this is a DevOps kind of a methodology. I think so. I think you're seeing more and more um, DevOps entering all sorts of things. I mean, we saw uh, Elon Musk with SpaceX uh, launch uh, Falcon Heavy. And one thing that was different about that program is they use utilize tons of testing, like iterative development, iterative testing. So before the launch, they did a bunch of test firing. And yeah. then when they launched it, it was just like second nature. So it's kind of like they simulated everything and then tested everything before they ran the, the launch of this heavy rocket. Mm -hmm. um, and so the same thing can be done with infrastructure. Developer defined infrastructure or infrastructure as code. Right, so tell me what you mean when you say developer-defined infrastructure. Right, so uh, back in the old days, uh, you know, I used to, you know, I started working at the help desk. And I would go around and install like uh, computer network cards. I lost my cards. password again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, it was pretty much before the passwords, you know, that yeah. it wasn't a lot of passwords, but yeah, um, it was mostly like uh, network cards and installing the drivers on the network cards, then installing the operating system, then installing the software and getting it all to work. Uh, after that, I worked on servers, including Oracle, Oracle version 5, and we, we would spend a week or two setting up servers and, and getting that going and then putting the applications on top of those. Uh, by the end of a project, it might take three months. Jeez. Um, and so now with the cloud, it's, it's much easier. Uh, you know, you have a certain interface from Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Right. You've got a different interface from, uh, you know, Google's cloud service. You've got a different one from AWS. Right. Uh, if you've got a private cloud, you know, you may have your own um, uh, set of interfaces or on bare metal. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but basically, you're going through the interface to set up the infrastructure, or you're writing some elaborate SDKs. Um, but what infrastructure code and developer defined infrastructure allows you to do is, just like in DevOps where we build, test, deploy, and we iterate on that, we can now do that in uh, a single uh, set of codified infrastructure directives. Okay, so let's, let's kind of walk through the example that you were talking about, starting with Terraform, yeah. right? So where'd you go from there? Right, so um, so we, we presented today, uh, and this is our first, we'll do three more presentations on this at Oracle Codes. Mm -hmm. um, but what we did was we took a example microservices app that had um, you know a couple different databases, a couple different microservices, uh, a bus, we used RabbitMQ to connect everything, uh, and it had a web server. And it was basically an example uh, that we posted, uh, which was a, sock store, like a oh, okay. dress sock store. And um, we were able to define the infrastructure which included uh, about 68 different components in uh, Oracle OCI. Okay. Uh, those components included uh, block storage, included several databases, included diff different virtual machine shapes, the security groups to connect all this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know a couple different web servers and a load balancer. Right. So about 68 different components. Now, if we'd gone into the cloud infrastructure, I think it would have taken me about half a day to go through all the steps, uh -huh. and I might have made mistakes. Sure. But we were able to codify it in a single file, run that file, it completed in five minutes. After we completed the standup of the infrastructure, uh, we ran, we deployed our application to this infrastructure. Uh -huh. We ran a series of pre-scripted tests. The test passed. Then we destroyed the infrastructure, turned everything off, and we got charged about a dollar, dollar twenty-five. A dollar twenty-five. Yeah. So that and three dollars will get you a latte. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Wow. Exactly. Cheaper than a latte, and uh, huh. probably about the same time. 
Gosh, that is terrific. Yeah. That is terrific. So when you, so in this scenario, these are this this makes it possible for developers to stand up, do their own testing, right? Or well, are we still kind of working through the service desk and the DBA getting involved? Gotcha. So so ideally the operations team would build and define the reusable infrastructure components mm -hmm. as code. Right. Um, and then a developer could come along and say, you know, I want a WebLogic server, or I want a microservice that does this, or I want a microservice that does that, mm -hmm. or a database that does this, and they can basically define that and run it on their laptop and maybe on a development environment. And then it would pass through some sort of code review. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the operations team, which would include the DBAs, yep. uh, the operations team could have the opportunity to review that, mm -hmm. make suggestions, changes, efficiencies, tunings, uh, and then automate their deployment uh, to the staging area and then eventually into production. Hmm. And we're doing that today. You can do it today. That's great. Um, I think, I think that uh, you know, we started with agile, and I think agile definitely led to DevOps, what we have today. And I just read uh, something. I don't know if it was a Forrester or Gartner study, but uh -huh. they're saying that companies that are using DevOps are not two or three times faster than companies that aren't. They're saying they're two hundred times faster. Wow. And the database has traditionally been a bottleneck. You know, it's like the DBA is like, what do you mean I got to do a code review? And, <laughs> yeah. you know, Amazon releases like, I, I think they had one day where they had 23,000 code releases in a single day. Ow. And so how can you do code reviews and, and do things like that? Well. The answer is by automating and right. uh, looking for best practices and, and collecting metrics along the way and continuously improving. And so you bring up an interesting point that now more than ever, um, policy is going to be very important because there's no way you can process that amount of code review without a policy to measure against. Even an, you know, a way to automate because the criteria that you're automating against, I mean, for me, I would just be automating, okay, any user, interfa user interface with red in it, we're good. <laughs> but actually, you know, you can become much more, you know, line oriented when it comes to your criteria for when you're going to flag something in these code reviews, right? I so agree. that's I think that's important. Is red your favorite color? It is these days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have another question though. I want to talk a little bit about this the continuum of pass to SAS because I think that's really a, a you know, a big opportunity area when it comes to the cloud and with and application development. So tell me, what, how do you, um, you know, walk through that continuum of pass to SAS? Gotcha. Well, I, I think it would start with where is the need? And okay. if, if we go back to before uh, we started Viscosity, mm -hmm. I spent 15 years rolling around doing uh, JD Edwards and eBusiness Suite implementations. Yeah. And there was impossible to implement eBusiness Suite uh, without some kind of customization. Mm -hmm. Either you were building custom reports, or there was a specific line of business apps that just didn't exist, uh -huh. or there was this third party shop floor system that needed to be integrated. So you had to do those things uh, to get the value out of the ERP system. Mm -hmm. um, SaaS has come along, and I think the same principles apply, but a lot of folks don't know that you, know, you can build what we used to call customizations. Mm -hmm. Customizations got a bad name, <laughs> but <Extensive>. extensions, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. And, and so we renamed them extensions, and then they got a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but you can build those things now, um, and you can build them so much faster than you used to. Uh, and yeah. especially if you apply DevOps principles, you can build them dozens of times faster, uh, and easier, and with low code. We, we've mm -hmm. talked about low code before. You can build those extensions with low code. And the real benefit you're going to get from 
an ERP system, whether that's a, a SaaS-based ERP system or an on-premise one is the automation, the hyper-automation, where you know I've got a task that may take 15 steps, but I can do it with one click. And you're only ever going to get that automation by connecting the platform to your third-party components to your ERP in the cloud system. Right, okay. Well, that's understandable. That's very, and great, great benefits coming from that. Oh, you bet. Right. Yeah. So um, what's next for, you know, the, the next big trend that you're seeing this year? I mean, a lot of people, okay, we moved our data to the, to the, the cloud. And now we're talking about, you know, optimizing your data in the cloud. And mm -hmm. then we're talking about the autonomous database. Yes. Um, but not everybody's going to go for that autonomous database approach. I mean, that works for a very, very serious segment. But um, what do you see as another, you know, larger trend in the bell curve? Okay, that's a big one. Um, you know, there's, a new framework every three months, right? <laughs> you know, we were on uh, Angular and, and now we're on React JS. Oh, you are, okay, yeah. yeah. So now there's all these frameworks, right? Um, I think developer defined infrastructure, infrastructure is code. I think that's really catching on. You know, being able to stand up a cluster and run tests in five minutes and take it down, I think that's huge. Okay. Um, pass for SaaS for sure. Um, Goodness, tons of tons of stuff. Right, right. Um, well, I you know it's kind of a new day for the developers too. They're they're they have starting more power to come than out. Ever. Oh, definitely, definitely. More power. It's cool to be a developer now, and just cool to write code. Right. It never was before. Well. You know. Yeah. They were like the stepchildren of uh, of everyone else, right? Yeah. And we and used to keep them in the basement. Exactly. <laughs> and so containerization, Docker containers, uh, right. developer, developer has a lot of control. They work directly with the business now. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely it's a new age dawning. I think uh, operations uh, is going to catch up to that. So operations will be able to put some more of those controls in place mm -hmm. like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, the DBAs being a quintessential part of operations. Um, you know, I think, you know, the, the cloud has brought a bunch of fragmented systems and pulling it all together. I think that's going to be the trend. Mm -hmm. uh, autonomous data warehouse, cloud, redshift. I mean, those are some of the things that are pulling the data together, assembling the data. That's how Amazon sells me books that I didn't even want to buy. How do they right. do that? Yes. I, they assembled the data, but they did that a decade ago. Uh, but companies are going to have to do that to survive. Mm -hmm. And so pulling all the data together, even Oracle's moving to be data as a service. They've got credit union data on 110 million households that's mm -hmm. part of their SaaS offering. Oh. Kind of the creepy internet data. Yeah. But they can understand buyer decisioning and that has a lot of value. And right. especially the better you understand your customers, the better you're going to be able to sell to them. Exactly. So yeah. It's interesting, last week I was in a conference and the presenter was talking about advanced analytics. And uh, they, they said, you know, uh, they were talking about looking at the data differently. Whereas before you would look at things at a meta level, yeah. but now you don't have to do that anymore. The relationships can be much more, much more, uh, you know, uh, unique. Right. And even individualized. And so entire business models are shifting around the availability of data and the extensibility of the data. Yep. And so all these applications that you're talking about and the, you know, the pass to SaaS fits. That's where the data is. It's all fitting inside of there. So um, all of these things are starting to come together. They're all aligning. It's an interesting, it's an interesting time to be an Oracle developer, I think. I, I think it's 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 as interesting as ever. Yeah. yeah, and you have so much, so much more tools are available to you, yeah. and the cloud, especially with the universal credits, you can try stuff out. Mm -hmm. uh, you're giving away 500 bucks in cloud credits. I mean, it's you know, cool. I could stand up 500 clusters for what we spent today. Nice. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, look at J Crew. I mean, they closed mm -hmm. their bricks and mortar 
shops. They, they, they reinvented themselves immediately as a business to consumer brand, a direct to consumer brand. You've got all these uh, apparel companies that are starting up, uh, made to measure. I saw this one company that had a Kickstarter that it's an automated jacket. It has a GPS and a temperature sensor and it knows if you're starting to get cold and it puts heat into your jacket. I wow. mean, all of these custom type things that are very niche related, that are data related. Mm -hmm. um, one of these apps, you can take a picture of yourself and it'll tell you the exact size that you need. But not only the size you need, it'll create a garment for that for for you to fit that size. Nice. And and so this is this is what the big bricks and mortar companies, I think you're going to see within a year or two, you'll probably see Nordstrom's do the same thing, hmm. reinvent as a direct-to-consumer model. Neat. Yeah. That'll be fun. All right. Well, Jerry, as always, it's great talking with you. You too. And a lot us. of this, the technologies that we've been talking about all day long today are available out on developer.oracle.com. I'm also going to be locating a little bit more material from our friends at Viscosity, um, talking about some of these concepts that, that Jerry and, and others have been talking about today. So thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for sharing your time with us. <laughs> all right. Appreciate it. Take care.